Welcome to Power Charting. I am your host, Bruce Frazier. We have a great show for you today. We are here to discuss seasonality in financial markets with Tia Muratovic, Dimitri Speck. They are the co-founders of Seasonax, Seasonax.com, and are really among the foremost experts in the world on the principles and research of seasonality. So uh, very excited to have them here. You've seen their research often in the past on power charting, and we are going to hear from them how seasonality can positively influence your portfolio for investing and trading. So let's get started. One brief announcement, and that is ChartCon. ChartCon is coming up October 7th and 8th. It's going to be a great program, the biggest and best one yet. I'm very excited to be participating in this. I've got three great uh, segments, three great parts in this. Uh, I'm very excited about interviewing Martin Pring. I'm also very excited about some new uh, research that I'm going to show you on how to find leadership through sectors, through industry groups, best stocks and best groups using the tools at Stock Charts. So please be there. Join me. We're going to have a great time. Many other great speakers are going to be there also. Dimitri and Tia, thank you so much for being here. I'm very excited to hear your presentation. Thank you, Bruce. We are looking forward to it. So, uh, Dimitri, I, I understand you're going to start. So with the limited time that we have, take it away. Thank you, Bruce, and welcome to everyone uh, to this short introduction in seasonal power charting. Seasonality in general is often uh, mentioned when it's about stock indices or also commodities, but seasonality exists also in stocks and currencies and even bonds. Um, here I show you a very uh, simple uh, example. You see the blue line. Uh, this is the performance of the Dow Jones uh, in the winter half, in the winter season from November to April. And in red, you see uh, the summer half from May to October. This effect is also called Halloween effect. And for sure, you have heard already of sell and may go away. And this saying is known since the 1930s. And this is why I'm showing it to you, because uh, you see here uh, that it exists now over 60 years. So it means uh, that there is some uh, value in, in seasonality. Yeah? We come later how you can trade these patterns. Yeah? But this just is an example that seasonality has a tendency to persist over a long period of time. How can you um, look at seasonality very fast? For this, uh, a seasonal chart is uh, very helpful. And I show you here the uh, S&P 500 seasonal uh, chart over 25 years. And this is not a normal chart as you are used to, but it is an average curse of the return over this period of 25 years. You can see here in every point of uh, the, the year uh, where the performance is on the day and the percent scale on the left. And we have, for instance, here the trend from March uh, to end of April. Here we have the sell and main go away effect with this red arrow. And then we have the autumn rally or year end rally. And here at the very end, from mid of December, we have the Christmas rally. So a chart, a seasonal chart helps you to depict a seasonal trend with at a glance very quick. Yeah. And uh, this was an example for stock indices. But in my opinion, what is very interesting is the seasonality in stocks themselves. Yeah, Because we have much more stocks uh, than uh, stocks indices. And if there is a uh, Individual seasonal an individual seasonal trend in a stock or in a stock sector also, then you have the chance of an outperformance at any time uh, uh, of the year. Yeah, this is the advantage compared to this simple sell may go away. 
Yeah, because also in the in the worst months of the year, there are a seasonal pattern uh, which in particular stocks, which uh, give you a chance of an outperformance. And what you see here is uh, the seasonal trend of Microsoft. And this is for me also very interesting because I was looking at the seasonal chart very long. And then I found the reason behind this seasonal uh, trend in October, which is marked. Yeah, from the second week of October around about until the first week of November, you have a huge outperformance, which is an average, almost like the total performance of the year or even a little bit more. And where does this performance come from? I looked at it and looked at it and looked at it and I found a few years ago, this is also why I didn't make an update of this chart. This is, uh, I found that during this period, yeah, uh, Microsoft uh, did earning surprises. So in, at, at the beginning of October, the company reported usually significantly better earnings than in other periods in the other three quarters of the year. Yeah, and this leads to this uh, significant outperformance. And this shows to you that there are good fundamental reasons for particular um, uh, price movements, seasonal price movements in stocks, which you can easily find if you have good tools. And uh, this gives you the chance in every period of the year to find uh, seasonal outperformance in the stock market, but also in the commodity markets, of course, or in the forex market. Yeah. And uh, there are reasons like these earning surprises. There are also other like fears and so on. It's really, um, yeah, it's a wild field because we have so many stocks. And this example now is uh, from the field of uh, currencies. It shows you the euro against uh, the US dollar. And um, you can here, you see here that in December, the euro typically does rise compared to the US dollar at the turn, the average turn is exactly at the turn of the year. And then in January, uh, the, the the euro falls again and this has also a strong fundamental reason this is a tax reason in us big companies move their money abroad to their daughter companies to save taxes now this is a bookkeeping reason for this pattern yeah and after the turn of the year this reason doesn't exist anymore and the money flows back i asked a talk with a friend of mine who worked in a big us oil company and he confirmed me this reason that the companies are behaving like this so this shows you there are many seasonal patterns yeah and they are in many assets not only in the stock indices or in the commodities yeah and uh, I think for the round, for the big picture, I decided to show you also um, this chart, which is not a normal seasonal chart, but a four year cycle chart. So you see here the Dow Jones over an average over 120 years over the election cycle. That means the left quarter of this chart shows you the typical election year, then the post-election year, then the midterm election year, and then the pre-election year. And I show you this because in the midterm election year, the stock market is typically quite weak. Yeah, and this is exactly what we do have now. The reason is simply that uh, um, things which affect the people negatively, like the increase of interest rates of the Fed funds, happen uh, typically more easily there because they don't need to, to look for re-election. This happens only later. Then uh, there is more deficit spending and so on to, to increase the mood of the people. Yeah. And um, here I show you something uh, back to seasonality. You have heard probably of many trading approaches and there are scientists who have um, done a to my knowledge, the longest study of um, trading approaches, uh, they compared six, six different trading strategies um, in, in up to more than 200 years in 68 markets. Yeah, And you see here on the left, very popular and very common strategies like the value strategy is okay, but there are better ones. And seasonality is one of three really good trading strategies according to this scientific study and this confirms again 
there is something behind you can make use of out of seasonality. Yeah? It gives you an advantage compared to just buy and hold. Yeah. And uh, it's also interesting, you can combine it also with your existing trading strategy because seasonality is an input factor coming from the calendar. It's not just one more fundamental strategy or one more technical indicator. It comes from the calendar, so you can combine it statistically independent with your existing trading strategy, and uh, you can benefit uh, from this and you increase your chances for a profit and decrease the risk in average. This is a short introduction on this topic. I hope it helped you. We switch now live to my colleague Tia, who shows you uh, the seasonal charts together with statistics. This is the screen here. And I would like to um, mention there is not a seasonality per se, there is always a seasonal pattern. That means you see in the seasonal chart a very good trend. And uh, this uh, is something you can examine with two mouse clicks, and then you see there is an outperformance for instance, and it's a good pattern, and then you can decide whether you invest in this particular stock, for instance, or not. So thank you very much from my side, and we continue live. We are now turning to Tia Muratovich. She is co-founder of Season Acts, and she's going to continue on with the next part of the presentation. Tia, thank you so much for being here, and please carry on. Good afternoon, Bruce, once again, and I'm really, really honored to be here today. So in the next minutes, I will show you how you can optimize your trades and your timing by using CZX. So for all, for all of you guys out there, don't forget to sign up uh, for free at CZX.com and you will be able to access all of the charts and seasonal patterns that I'm going to discuss today. So Bruce, I think at the moment we are all sitting at the same boat. Rate hikes, pandemic, inflation, geopolitical situation are not making our trading decisions any easier. Uh, Tia, I couldn't agree more. Actually, there's water in my boat. It, I have a leak. I think that we are all feeling this water. <laughs> so therefore, I definitely decided to show you how you can use Season X to find these profitable investment opportunities and to choose from different sectors that are more likely to outperform the broad market during a recession. Uh, but I also wanted to point out that please be aware that everything that I'm presenting today is not a financial advice, it's just pure statistics based on a historical data. So, okay, let's start maybe with the first sector. Healthcare is definitely a safe haven when markets turn south. And one of the stocks to consider from this sector is one pharmaceutical giant or so-called Dividend King, it's Abri. Give me one second to call up the chart. So let me explain what are you seeing in front of you. This is not the current price chart. It is the average seasonal chart of the last 10 years, or exactly to be quite precise, nine years. The horizontal axis below in the chart shows the months within the year and the vertical axis shows the percentage change of the price that is indexed to 100. It is also very important to say um, that all the statistics that will appear on the right hand side and below always refers to the selected chart in the selected period in the chart. So let's start. I will select this period, so the period from, to be quite precise, 24th of October till December 30th. So it is clearly visible that the end of October until end of December over the past nine years have been favorable months for these pharma stocks. In this time span, if I look down, 46 trading days, shares rose or on average by almost 14 percent. Moreover, what is even important, since 2013, the pattern returns had a winning stride of 100 percent. 
And that means that every genera generated gain each year since 2013. This is, this is once again showed in the pattern returns below in this blue bars that you are seeing on your screen. So use this information when you are opening and closing your positions and keep in mind that individual stocks, as Dimitri already mentioned, have their seasonal trends during the entire year. There are also another stocks that are trending high from the sector as Pfizer, um, even such insurances such as United Health on Anthem. So remember to season X them all before you trade them. When I think about recession, there is also another unpopular consequence um, that is many consumers will curb their spendings. However, as consumers still need to buy staples such as food or household goods, demand tends to hold hold better than other areas in the economy uh, in the in these sectors that are that are related to the foods and beverages and households. So I'm referring here to large food manufacturers such as Tyson Foods or Kellogg's or even Mondelez International. Um, so let me try to call up the chart of Mondele International. Okay, here it is. So before you start to crunch the numbers, take a look at the one neat function that is quite helpful that I'm now using, as you can see. It is called detrending, and I always use it when I try to analyze so-called high flyers. With one click, you can then better notice weak and strong phases within the instruments that you want to analyze. So, okay, let's stay with Mondelez. And the seasonal pattern of the Mondelez, I would say, has been quite persistent during March 23rd until July 27 in each year. So each year since 2014, Mondelez made significant gains. If I go even further, and if I take a look at the seasonal chart of the last 15 years, uh, the winning strides are quite remarkable. Also in this year, 2022, as you can see, the stock made also a small gain. With season X, you can also compare single years like 2022 or any additional year that you want to analyze. And you can also compare instrument to its peer group or to index. So when you are buying or selling your stocks, check the seasonal trend before and save a lot of money on your future transactions, of course. Okay, so let me show you maybe one more example of so-called recession-proof sector, that is the luxury goods. And Bruce, I'm not referring to Ferrari, maybe I will take some other stock now. Um, actually, it is well-known fact that luxury stocks are trending quite high during uncertain times. And I will show you one interesting stock. It is called Christian Dior. So all of the fashion lovers have heard about it. So Christian Dior has quite a good trend from March until May. And it has also a great upcoming seasonal trend in October, from October 5th onwards. Of course, there is no guarantee that the seasonal pattern will reoccur also this year, but there is a high statistical probability that it does. Okay. Okay, so guys, let me show you maybe one more feature, and that is my favorite feature in Season X that really simplifies your trading decisions, and it is called the screener. So how does the screener work? Screener can show you really within seconds, literally, when and where to invest. Therefore, the only thing that you have to do by yourself is set your screening parameters. First of all, you have to choose the market that you want to analyze. So you can choose from different stocks, from US indices, NASDAQ, S&P, Dow Jones, European indices from DAX, tech, 
uh, ATX, FTSE, and so on, US, even US sectors or some other international like Japanese indices, or you can also choose among commodities or currencies. So in this example, I will go for, let's say, S&P 500. Uh, secondly, you have to decide when do you want to place your trades? Do you want to place your trades today or in one week or in one month? Let's say I will go for October the 6th. Um, third, you have to decide how many past years do you want to analyze? So 10, 15, 20. Also, actually, this is also a good question that I'm always getting and trying to answer. So what is the best time period to choose from? Is that 10 years or 15 years or 20 years? So I would say to our uh, users or to SeasonX users, it is quite individuals if they're people that we have from the institutional, like as institutional clients from the banks, as researcher, the researchers, they go maybe for a longer time because of the empirical studies and the traders go for 10 or 15, 15 years. This is like more than enough, um, but like it's very individual. Okay, and let's do one more thing. Let's go back to our screening parameters. So we choose so far 10 years, S&P 500. And I want to also remove all results with lower uh, rates of winning trades than 19%. And as you can see, within the seconds, I'm getting my list. And Teradyne is ranked first. Bruce, if I'm not mistaken, Teradyne uh, is involved in defense and aerospace, but you will know better that than me. So it is also quite handy to have this stock in the current market environment. Yes. So you can even, and yeah. That's you been can a great even, season out. Yeah, great uh, theme, uh, outperformance theme has been that sector, yes. So Teradyne, as I said, is involved in defense and aerospace, so it's quite handy. Um, so you, what you can do also with the screener, you can even dive deeper into the analysis by clicking on the list and opening a seasonal chart. And you can do also the same for all other currencies in the screener currencies or for all other commodities, for all other sectors and indices. Uh, unfortunately, I think that so many more features that we haven't discussed. So I hope at least I managed to open your appetite to find out more. So don't forget guys to sign up for season X for all today's participants. This is 30% discount code. So the code for the uh, discount is power 30. And it's very generous of- uh, more than- 100,000 strong and weak trading patterns and daily trades. Of course, you have three days free trials, so use this opportunity and optimize your trades. And also, don't forget uh, to sign up to our bi-weekly research report. It's called Seasonal Insights. So the last one was published last week where we were discussing smoking hot stocks. So thank you, Bruce, and thank you all for joining us today. And remember, don't just trade it, season exit. Thank you so much, Tia. Thank you, Dimitri. And uh, Tia, if you can still hear me, uh, what is, uh, you may have been cut off at that point, but what is the uh, typical charge or the charge for a service like this? Sure, Bruce, if you go to our website, you have like two different plans. Uh, it's full and business subscription uh, you, that you can apply on. So uh, the difference between these two subscription is the number of the screening universes that you have included. Uh, so you can subscribe to one year, three months or one month. Of course, the one month will be the most expensive. It's $50 a month or one year is a little bit cheaper per month. And now you can also apply this 30 
uh, 30% discount to the yearly full or business subscription or to the monthly. It uh, power 30 uh, discount code applies to the first invoice that you are getting from us. Tia and Dimitri, thank you so much for being here and for showing us uh, all about seasonality and this wonderful tool that you have. And uh, thank you all for being here and we will see you next time. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with stockcharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.